Hi there, and welcome to another episode of 411 Pop Culture, where real people talk about really everything. I'm your host, Justin Steele, and tonight we are going to discuss one of my all-time favorite Disney childhood shows, Road to Avonlea. Based upon the novels by Lucy Maud Montgomery, such as The Story Girl and Chronicles of Avonlea, Road to Avonlea is a Canadian television show that ran from 1990 to 1996, also airing on the Disney Channel in the United States. A spin-off of Kevin Sullivan's immensely popular 1985 Anne of Green Gables series starring Megan Follows, Colleen Dewhurst, and Jonathan Crombie, Road to Avonlea initially follows Sarah Stanley, a young girl from Montreal who, after her father is accused of embezzlement, is sent to live with her late mother's relatives on Prince Edward Island in the town of Avonlea. Sarah Stanley is played by the incredibly talented and renowned Sarah Pauly, who went on to star in celebrated roles in films such as Go, The Sweet Hereafter, Dawn of the Dead, and Splice, as well as to direct acclaimed films such as Away From Her, Take This Waltz, and The Captivating Stories We Tell. Her role as Sarah Stanley allowed the young actress to lead the charming ensemble of Road to Avonlea, consisting of celebrated actors such as Jackie Burroughs, Lally Cadeau, Cedric Smith, Gemma Semproni, Zachary Bennett, Michael Mahone, and Mag Ruffman. Guest appearances over the years included Christopher Lloyd, Diane Wiest, Eugene Levy, Faye Dunaway, Christopher Reeve, Madeline Kahn, Meg Tilly, Ryan Gosling, Treat Williams, Soccer Channing. The performances in Road to Avonlea were stellar and convincingly made viewers feel a part of this family of characters from the King family of PEI. Road to Avonlea is a charming look at a simpler time, but the fears, triumphs, and love are still relatable to contemporary audiences. On this episode of 411 Pop Culture, we are going to list the top 10 episodes of Road to Avonlea. I tried to be as biased as I could be, of course, but as a reviewer, my own tastes certainly factor in. I believe that in reviewing films, TV shows, books, and so forth, that I have a responsibility to try and gauge who exactly is the audience for the work in question intended, as well as apply what I consider to be good. In selecting these episodes, I have to be honest, these episodes span primarily the first three seasons of Road to Avonlea. In prepping for this, I rewatched the entire series, and I realized how much I do enjoy the later seasons as well, and there are some amazing episodes throughout seasons 4 to 7. But I really believe the best of the best of this show is from the first three seasons. I tried to think about which episodes I could take out if I were showing someone Road to Avonlea for the first time. I compiled this list and switched in and out some options, but kept coming back to the episodes that made the cut. I have decided I will, however, do a follow-up episode of The Best of Road to Avonlea, Seasons 4-7. to seven. Spoilers ahead! The following episodes are a combination of what I think people loved about the show, alongside what I loved about the show. Road to Avonlea is an amalgamation of family drama, comedy, mystery, and romance. Lucy Maud Montgomery had a way of examining the dynamics that come with mixing older people with much younger people to show that certain emotions are timeless and can apply to people of any age. Younger people are influenced by those that are older and sometimes wiser, while older people can still learn a few new lessons from the youth. The golden years of Road to Avonlea were the years when the kids were still kids, just starting to really grow up, while the adults were still young enough to relate to the younger cast, and still maintaining a maturity to which one could aspire. The following episodes have the best combination of these ideas, and represent the best of what I believe Road to Avonlea had to offer. Number 10, High Society, Season 3, Episode 11. Although Sarah Stanley begins as the primary protagonist of the series, the show as a whole was designed to be an ensemble piece. Sarah Polly would eventually move on from the show, and Felicity King would become the lead of the younger cast. This episode really showcased Gemma's dramatic skills through her yearning for more than just a life on the farm. Felicity's arc on the show began as the proud, bossy, but envious eldest daughter of Alec and Janet King. Her jealous feelings of Sarah's wealth and culture eventually dissolved into a genuine friendship and respect. Throughout the series, 
Felicity was incredibly intelligent, yet she also set the stage for much comic relief through her bossiness of the younger children and her yearning for romance. She would eventually learn from the mistakes from her childhood to become a responsible young woman. Yet, High Society is an excellent episode that shows Felicity in the middle of her arc throughout the series. She has a better sense of deserved confidence at this point in the series, however, she still has not accepted herself for who she is. In the episode, Felicity has received some of the highest marks on the island and is rewarded with a trip to Kingsport Ladies College. Once arriving to the school, Felicity soon feels inadequate compared to the other girls. She pretends that Sarah's life experiences have been her own and tells several lies to the other girls. In doing so, she betrays her parents and herself. In High Society, there is also a fun Felix subplot with the introduction of Chef Pierre in which Felix's robust appetite allows Felix to appreciate all the cantankerous chef prepares. This subplot crosses over with Sarah trying to teach Gus fine manners and etiquette in order to impress Felicity. As usual, the subplots to Road to Avonlea are typically a fun, comedic balance to the more dramatic sequences, and High Society is no exception, but the primary storyline fixed on Felicity's growing pains and handling of peer pressure and self-esteem is both touching and poignant. This episode of Road to Avonlea is incredibly on the mark in demonstrating the growing pains of the early teenage years. We have all told a lie that we regret at that time in our life in order to fit in with our peers, and hopefully we all reach that point where we realize we are who we are, and that is what makes us special. Number 9, Misfits and Miracles, Season 2, Episode 13. The Season 2 finale centers on tryouts for the Avonlea's ice hockey team, the Avengers. The coach for the team, Archie Gillis, has very narrow ideas on who should or should not be on a hockey team. After Archie's incredibly arbitrary requirements exclude a very few talented hopefuls, Alec King decides to coach the castoffs as the Misfits in order to challenge Archie's new, developed, official Avonlea team and to show that talent comes in all shapes and sizes and that competitive sports can be enjoyed to their fullest by men, women, and children. With help from reoccurring guest characters Miss Stacy and the so-called Witch of Avonlea Peg Bowen, the Misfits succeed in giving the Avengers a run for their money. In the meantime, the season-long-awaited birth of newest King member has finally arrived. Unfortunately, Alec has injured himself and Janet has no one else to rely on besides Sarah. The episode is a charming way to end season two as it showcases an array of supporting characters while concluding some of the more dramatic moments of the season. This episode also showcases the importance of respecting nature and each other through Peg Bowen as well as showcases her always welcome inclusion to the series. Peg outsmarts and outwits Archie McGillis on several occasions and, along with Aunt Janet, helps to develop Sarah's self-confidence. Hetty's long-standing animosity towards Muriel Stacy delightfully continues in this episode, and as always, Muriel manages to teach Hetty a lesson or two, while allowing Hetty to maintain her sense of rigid pride. In the end, everyone comes together to celebrate the birth of a new King member. As always, the show does a fine job of balancing the comedic moments with genuine dramatic emotion, and Misfits and Miracles is a strong example of allowing viewers to see the importance of inclusion, especially because you never know what talents a person can bring to your team if you refuse to give them their shot to try and show you all they have to offer. Number 8, The Ties That Bind, Season 3, Episode 1. As much as we have come to love the supporting characters of Avonlea, the episodes that highlight the ongoing family drama of the King family are always among the best of the series, and funniest. The wedding of Olivia King and Jasper Dale is no exception. In fact, this episode is about the importance of family, but at the same time, also the importance of what each member contributes as an individual to the family by how they are different. Olivia and Hetty's sibling relationship is put to the test as Olivia prepares to leave Rose Cottage to begin her life with Jasper. Olivia is determined to stand up against Hetty's constant criticism while the root of the problem is Hetty's insecurities of being left behind. 
Much like Felicity, Hetty has always been the bossy older sister, but the truth of the matter is always that Hetty is afraid of being left alone in the end. Hetty is Hetty, of course, and creates chaos for Janet by demanding that Olivia's reception be held on the King Farm. A subplot involves another wedding occurring on the same day, and comedy ensues as Olivia's wedding dress is accidentally switched with the other bride's dress. It becomes up to Hetty to save the day and show her support for her sister through laugh-out-loud moments of her charging through the town in her carriage and fighting with the other bride's mother. This episode also introduces the family dog Digger, of whom the adorable Cecily grows incredibly attached and who creates quite a bit of hilarious mayhem on the day of the wedding. Jasper wants to prove his love to Olivia, and with the help of Sarah, struggles to overcome his stuttering to deliver a heartfelt speech. Aunt Eliza also makes an appearance, managing as always to put everyone on edge with her astute if unwelcome criticism. The wedding is not what everyone planned, but what matters most shines through in the end, especially the love between Jasper and Olivia. Number 7, Sarah's Homecoming. The Season 2 opener finds Sarah, Felicity, and Felix in front of Lawson's General Store excited about the upcoming Dominion Day fireworks celebration. When Sarah is temporarily left in charge of the store, Felix takes the opportunity to try and purchase some fireworks. A series of unfortunate but hilarious incidents lead to all the fireworks going off and Alec becoming furious with his niece Sarah. Meanwhile, Sarah's father Blair has decided it is time for Sarah to come back to Montreal. Sarah decides to accept. However, upon arriving in Montreal, a terrible accident occurs, leaving Sarah devastated. She returns to Avonlea grief-stricken and in complete shock. She is convinced by Peter Craig to attend the Visiting Traveling Circus, where she meets a fortune teller. Things go badly when Sarah finds out that Isis is a fake and she is kidnapped to be held for ransom. Uncle Alec heads out on his own in a desperate search to bring Sarah home to safety. The darkness of the episode is alleviated by the comedic bickering between Aunt Hetty and Nanny Louisa. Furthermore, the episode maintains the thrilling suspense coupled with loving sentiment for which Road to Avonlea is known. Alec's relationship with Sarah is shown to be strengthened through Cedric Smith's natural charisma and Sarah Polly's performance is only further proof of all that the actress would go on to achieve. This episode is actually one of my personal top favorites. To be fair, when looking at the best of the best of the series, I feel like it really landed at the seventh spot on this list. However, when I was a youngster, I remember watching the next on preview for this episode on the Disney Channel and could not wait to see this episode. I couldn't believe that Sarah would be kidnapped and the clip of Isis's fortune-telling tricks terrified me as a kid. I was unprepared for some of the more devastating elements of the first half of this episode and the long-lasting effects it would have on Sarah. In addition, it is a fun look at a traveling circus at the turn of the century, as well as a touching look at how the King family would always come together for each other in the end, and also how sometimes we are harshest with those we love in order to keep them safe. Number 6. Nothing Endures But Change, Season 1, Episode 13. When we began the journey to Avonlea through the eyes of Sarah Stanley, she had to leave her father and Nanny Louisa behind. Her father, Blair Stanley, was under house arrest after charges of embezzlement were brought against him. Throughout season one, Sarah constantly defended and proclaimed her father's innocence. Her father, Blair, however, has been eternally at odds with Hetty King ever since he married Sarah's mother, Ruth. Nothing endures but change is the culmination of all this family drama. In the episode, Blair returns to take Sarah back to Montreal and everyone is perplexed at what to do and how to react. Nothing Endures But Change showcases much of what fans love about Road to Avonlea. There is the King family drama in perfect balance with comedic moments between the adult siblings Alec, Olivia, Janet, and Hetty trying to make sense of what to do with Hetty's typical attempts to control the situation as the eldest. Meanwhile, Sarah is delighted to be finally proven right about her father. However, she is not ready to leave Avonlea with Hetty and Blair still quarreling as she is afraid that she might not be allowed to return. 
the youngsters decide to band together and take matters into their own hands in order to help Sarah stay a little while longer. After everything culminates in a serious injury, Hetty and Blair finally attempt to find a truce between themselves for the sake of Sarah. This episode does a fantastic job at delivering the main messages of Lucy Maul Montgomery and the show Road to Avonlea regarding how easily hurt feelings can develop into unnecessary anger and years-long feuds. The older characters learn that their own bitterness does not affect only themselves, but the younger generation as well. Ultimately, the importance of forgiveness is a lesson to remember as shown in this episode and petty fights do not outweigh all that can be lost when we refuse to let go of our anger. Number 5. How Kissing Was Discovered, Season 2, Episode 2 How Kissing Was Discovered is an episode that deals with growing up from both the perspective of the children and from the perspective of the grown-up cast. In particular, the way in which the grown-up cast is handling their own aging, as well as struggling with trying to remember being a teen. Felicity is finding less in common with the others, and is starting to drift from the children, which is frustrating to Sarah. Felicity has met a handsome, older stranger who turns out to be a visiting cricket player. Her father, Alec, meanwhile, is on the opposite cricket team and is coping with all the comments about his age up against the younger players. This episode also showcases one of the earliest examples of the Felix-Sarah duo that starts to take shape throughout the next couple of seasons. Sarah is still loyal to Felicity, but she and Felix spy on Felicity to get a better understanding of the odd way she is acting. This episode is also important as it is the first appearance of Michael McMahon as Gus Pike, a drifter who simply wishes to better himself and eventually have a family and home of his own. Gus and Sarah try to aid Felicity in her pursuit of David, which is putting Felicity at odds with Alec. Felicity gets her kiss from an unexpected source, and Alec and Janet find they are not as old as they think with the surprising news that Janet is pregnant. How Kissing Was Discovered is a shining example of the angst that comes being on the verge of the teenage years, the in-between of not being old enough to be involved in dating or other teen fancies, but knowing you are outgrowing the games of childhood. This episode foreshadows the later seasons of all the teen angst and budding romances, but there is comfort in knowing that the kids are still kids and the adults are still the adults. This episode of Road to Avonlea is a gentle reminder that as much as things change, they stay the same, no matter how old or young we may be or think we are. Number 4, The Journey Begins, Season 1, Episode 1. The first episode of Road to Avonlea is a dramatic breath of fresh air. As stated previously, Sarah Stanley must travel to her mother's hometown after her father is accused of embezzlement. She is accompanied by her nanny Louisa, of whom quickly ruffles the feathers of Sarah's Aunt Hetty. After nanny Louisa is forced to leave Sarah behind in Avonlea, Sarah is for the first time in her life left on her own. Her relatives are barely more than strangers, and she must learn to pick up after herself, go to school for the first time, and deal with territorial cousins. Still, she also finds allies in her cousin Andrew and the hired boy Peter Craig, has an adventure with the Witch of Avonlea, and learns more about her beloved mother Ruth. The first episode is a wonderful balance of the family drama and comedy with a dash of mystery for which the show became known and loved. The episode is full of fun moments where the kids take turns getting each other back and one-upping each other, as well as the battle of wills between Sarah and Hetty, and is the catalyst for the long-lasting competition between Hetty and Nanny Louisa. The tricks the kids play are hilarious, and the dynamic between Sarah, Hetty, and Aunt Olivia is established very quickly. The first episode sets a high standard for the rest of the series to follow and is a seamless transition from the 1985 Anne of Green Gables miniseries. And considering the devoted following to the miniseries, that is no easy feat. Number 3, A Mother's Love, Season 2, Episode 12. A local magazine is holding an essay-based contest to find the Mother of the Year. All the girls of Avonlea are excited to write and in some cases exaggerate on behalf of their own mothers. 
When Sarah decides to enter her Aunt Hetty into the contest, the other girls, in particular Felicity and Sally Potts, belittle her decision. Meanwhile, Hetty, Janet, and Mrs. Potts have an ongoing debate on what makes a real mother, nurture versus nature. Interestingly enough, it comes out that Felicity and Sarah Potts share the same birthday and were almost mixed up in the hospital. Sarah takes this bit of knowledge to get back at the girls for their cruel taunts and along with Felix concocts a plan to make Felicity and Sally believe they were actually switched at birth. The plan works a little too well and soon Felicity, Janet, and Sally and Mrs. Potts all think there really was a mix-up. The episode highlights the way in which Road to Avonlea skillfully handles situations of farce. The elements of farce are gleefully hilarious, and all the performances are at their best in this episode. Sally Potts and Mrs. Potts particularly shine in their ongoing supporting roles, while Gemma really allows Felicity to deliver an arc of redemption. Felicity redeems herself from her condescension to Sarah and Sally to realizing how lucky she really is and the truth is humbling. A fun fact is that the actress playing Sally Potts is shown in behind the scenes footage before the show aired auditioning for the role of Felicity, which as this episode points out makes sense as she does look quite a bit like Cecily and Sarah. Nevertheless, her take on Sally Potts as a childhood bully and antagonist who always gets her comeuppance is fun and always spot on, and Gemma was meant to play the bossy and direct Felicity King. This episode is also a fun demonstration of the Felix Sarah duo that worked incredibly well and became a fun staple over the next couple of seasons as they regularly found themselves together pulling pranks and often ending up in trouble. As the truth comes out, Janet and Mrs. Potts realize that Hetty was right. Giving birth alone does not necessitate a good mother. What makes a good mother is instead the love a woman gives to a child. Sarah Polly and Jackie Burroughs anchor the entire episode with their subtle performances, and the episode is a perfect balance of farcical comedy that melts into heartwarming family drama. Number 2, Proof of the Pudding, Season 1, Episode 6 by this episode, each of the younger cast has fully developed into their characters, and in doing so, each individual cast member helps the whole to create one of the funniest episodes of the entire series. When Janet and Alex decide to leave for an anniversary, Felicity is left in charge of Felix, Andrew, and Cecily. At the same time, Hetty is called away to save the water rights given to the Kings by the Rushton family, and she leaves Sarah also in Felicity's care. There is not an adult for miles. Unfortunately, Sarah and Felicity are in a fight that began earlier in the day when Sarah received a package from her father that made Felicity instantly jealous. Felicity's insensitive comments about Sarah's father, as well as ruining of Sarah's new satin shoes, has made Sarah furious with Felicity, and she has no intention to follow any of Felicity's instructions. Felix has also been driving Felicity mad by making a point to do every little thing she asks, infuriating her even further. The tension builds up and erupts to a hilarious onslaught of cherry pies in the face, hair pulling, hair cutting, and the swallowing of homemade remedies. To add on top of all of this, the kids mistakenly believe that a surprise visit from Agnes Rushmore, the owner of the water rights, is actually their death great Aunt Eliza. Proof of the Pudding is the episode that brought each of the younger cast into their own. Any doubts that the show would not live up to the 1985 miniseries was left far behind as this young cast proved they could effortlessly carry on the legacy. Viewers could relate to the youthful jubilance of being a kid with no adults around and the way in which kids interact with each other and will ultimately pull together in the end and maybe even get away with some mischievous behavior. Honorable Mentions the materializing of Duncan McTavish, a fun continuance of Anne of Green Gables centered on Marilla Cuthbert and Rachel Lind intertwined with the cast of Road to Avonlea. Conversion centers on Peter Craig, Peg Bowen, and the class struggle in Avonlea. Peter is unable to join in on the carefree fun of the rest of the kids due to his hard work and responsibilities, but when he takes ill, everyone realizes just how important he is to each of them.
In Felicity's challenge, Felicity, Sally Potts, and Jane Spry make a bet to see if Clemmy Ray can be made popular for a party. Felicity convinces herself she is doing the right thing by Clemmy until she realizes how humiliated she has made her friend feel. In Family Rivalry, the relationship between the adult king siblings reveal long-standing resentments when Andrew's father, Roger, returns for a visit. Roger is adored by Hetty, but his troubled relationship with Alec begins to affect Felix and Andrew. And number one on this list is But When She Was Bad, She Was Horrid, Season 3, Episodes 4-5. to five. This two-part episode encapsulates the best of Road to Avonlea and at the peak of the series. Drama, suspense, and a lot of laugh-out-loud comedy. In addition to that, the show was released through Disney in the U.S., and the Disney contributions also factor in, as But When She Was Bad, She Was Horrid takes inspiration from The Prince and the Pauper. For that very reason, I believe that some fans will want to resist this episode for the necessary suspension of disbelief, but that's exactly what Road to Avonlea is supposed to be a way to leave behind some of the bleak realities of contemporary times and instead settle into historical fantasy. The reviews I have read about this episode always seem to want to resist how much they enjoy it, but the reviewer always seems to shyly admit just how much fun the episode really is. And it really is. Sarah and Hetty have been going through a tough stage. Peacemaker Olivia has moved out of Rose Cottage, and Hetty in her usual controlling nature, is resisting Sarah growing up. Nevertheless, Sarah is growing up, and no longer having Olivia in the house has caused tensions between aunt and niece to reach their boiling point. After Hetty gives away a new dress Sarah has picked out for herself to the missions box, Sarah and Felix discover a girl has picked up the dress. This girl is Joe Pitts and looks exactly like Sarah Stanley. She is rude, crass, right to the point, and the exact opposite of Sarah, and yet she looks exactly like Sarah Stanley. Meanwhile, Gus Pike has received news that Captain Crane needs to see Gus on the mainland. When Aunt Hetty goes a step too far in the heat of anger, Sarah decides to run away with Gus and Joe Pitts offers to stay at Rose Cottage in her place. The only person in on the scheme is Felix, and from this moment on, the two girls are in for experiences they will never forget. In Avonlea, Joe creates absolute havoc for Aunt Hetty. After what Hetty said to Sarah, Hetty decides to be completely sweet and kind to Sarah. Only, Sarah is Joe Pitts. Joe Pitts is a pickpocket thief that has been secretly eyeing anything and everything valuable in Rose Cottage. Felix tries to keep her in line, but is rewarded with a punch in the nose. Meanwhile, on the mainland, Sarah and Gus come to find that the message was false, and instead, it was Gus's mean-spirited and vengeful father, Abe Pike, that called to Gus. Abe takes Gus captive, and Sarah runs fearfully down back streets and alleys. She stumbles right into the path of Buck Hogan, the leader of a gang of thieves that believe she is Joe Pitts. Unfortunately for Sarah, Joe has recently betrayed them, and they plan to make Sarah pay. The moments of the episode focused on Joe are primarily comedic, and very successfully so. From belching out the anthem, to getting her mouth washed out with soap, to being locked in the outhouse, these moments are played with seasoned hilarity. The effects of Joe Pitts on Hetty, Olivia, and Janet will bring tears to the audience's eyes through nonstop laughter. On the flip side, Sarah's experience with Buck Hogan and Abe Pike is effectively thrilling and suspenseful. The fact that the writers decided to allow the first part to end on a cliffhanger with Sarah being roughly pulled away by a strange young man was incredibly daring. The moment catches the viewer off guard and leaves one with a terrifying chill to wonder Sarah's fate. The show took a substantial risk in that each episode before and after always ended with the main obstacle being wrapped up on a steady note. The end of part one of this episode, where the main character is a young girl whose fate is left unknown, is pretty shocking for a show made for a family audience. The second part is just as strong and follows through on the promises of the first installment. Constantly threatened by Buck Hogan, Sarah is not out of danger yet, and her misadventure peaks at a moment of desperation where she is forced to become a thief. 
She does not know what to do, but knows she must do what she has to in order to survive. When her attempt comes crashing down, she takes her chance to escape and is pursued by Buck Hogan who has a crazy look in his eyes. Meanwhile, Joe's background as a child of the streets leads her to a point of almost no return. She hatches a plan to get rid of Hetty by drowning and finally getting the valuable she has coveted. The performances by Sarah Polly and Jackie Burroughs are perfection in this episode. Jackie Burroughs demonstrates all that we love about Hetty, from her controlling nature, to her great love for Sarah, to her ability to do pratfalls while showing her skills from both subtle to broad comedy. Sarah Polly's ability to play two such opposite characters shows just what a talented actress she was at such a young age, full of all the promise her talent would come to fulfill later on. With Joe, she knows not to take it too far, but is willing to take us right to the edge of believability for a laugh and skillfully pull back to keep the audience believing this mischievous waif could exist. With Sarah, she shows her soft determination, her terror at knowing she is in unfamiliar territory, her physicality in trying to escape, as well as her rightfully bitter loss in knowing that she knows better than Hetty how her mother would feel about Sarah. All of the actors and actresses of Road to Avonlea made the show incredibly special, but without Jackie Burroughs and Sarah Polly, the show would have always been missing something. The relationship between the two is what thrust the show forward season after season for so long, and this episode demonstrates all the best of that dynamic. But When She Was Bad, She Was Horrid is a unique episode within the series. At the same time, within the two parts from beginning to end, it is a true amalgamation of all the best of the series. The scheming duo partnership of Felix and Sarah, as well as now Felix and Joe, the Hetty Sarah battles and makeups, the budding romance of Gus and Felicity, the developing friendship between Gus and Sarah, the debates between the King ladies Janet, Olivia, and Hetty. My only real criticism is that we are missing Uncle Alec from the episode, but otherwise the episode offers non-stop entertainment that has something appealing to all fans of the series. The series was in its prime in But When She Was Bad She Was Horrid. The kids were a little older, but still clearly kids. The adults led the way fearlessly while still learning a lesson or two along the way. The episode is a wonderful tribute to the classic The Prince and the Pauper story, and a perfect tribute to what audiences loved about Lucy Mon Montgomery, which Kevin Sullivan truly understood, and that was the mix of young characters with older characters, with a bit of suspense, hijinks, mild romance, friendship, and the importance of family. And that does it for 411 Pop Culture's Top 10 List of Road to Avonlea Episodes, a show that I truly loved from my childhood. Watching it, I think it was every Sunday night on the Disney Channel, and I just loved it. But, like I said, I do believe I will go ahead and do a Road to Avonlea Seasons 4 to 7 Top 10 List. But please comment below, what were your favorite Road to Avonlea episodes on this list and maybe not on this list? Are you a fan of the earlier seasons or the later seasons? Please let me know and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.